could we reach Mars in just 30 days? Wow. That's the question on everyone's mind and what we are diving into today, uh -huh. the world of plasma propulsion and its potential to, um, yeah. you know, revolutionize how we travel through space. Absolutely. We've got a fascinating collection of articles and research papers here. Yeah. And some of them are even hinting at a new prototype out of Russia. Yeah, a prototype. That is causing quite a stir. It is. It's capturing a lot of imaginations worldwide and for good reason. Yeah. But to truly understand its implications, I think we need to really grasp the science behind this technology. Okay. You know where it came from, its ancient roots, oh, wow. how it evolved, and the really intricate engineering challenges that it presents. Okay, so let's unpack this. Yeah. Um, it's so fascinating to me to see that our sources trace this cutting edge technology mm -hmm. all the way back to ancient China. Oh, wow. They were launching fireworks with bamboo tubes filled with gunpowder. Wow. Who knew that those vibrant displays were early glimpses into the principles of rocketry. It really speaks to the enduring power of basic scientific principles. Yeah. Even then, they were unknowingly harnessing Newton's third law of motion. Right. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Oh. The, the gunpowder's explosion propelled those tubes skyward, mm -hmm. a very rudimentary demonstration of what would later become the foundation of space travel. It's incredible how these seemingly simple concepts laid the groundwork for something so complex. Yeah. But, you know, those early rockets were pretty basic, right? Yeah, they were. I mean, and then gunpowder technology advanced mm -hmm. and things got a little bit more explosive, literally. Indeed, gunpowder rockets became a mainstay in warfare for centuries. Right. Driving innovation, but plagued by limitations in range and control. Yeah. But yet, even amidst the chaos of battle, brilliant minds were envisioning a bolder future for rocketry. Mm -hmm. In the 1600s, a Polish engineer named Kazimierz Siminowicz... Oh proposed the revolutionary concept of multi-stage rockets. Multi-stage rockets, what's that all about? Imagine stacking rockets, like uh -huh. building blocks, each stage firing and then detaching oh, okay. to propel the next one higher. Wow. This ingenious idea really addressed the limitations of single-stage rockets, right. paving the way for us to reach orbit and beyond. Okay. It was a conceptual leap that foreshadowed the ambition of modern space exploration. So we've got these early experiments with gunpowder yeah. and the vision of multi-stage rockets. Mm -hmm. But rocket science needed a more solid theoretical foundation, right? That's precisely. Okay. Enter Sir Isaac Newton and his laws of motion, right. which provided the scientific bedrock for understanding how forces interact to produce motion. Okay. Building upon this foundation, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian scientist, right. formulated his groundbreaking rocket equation in the early 20th century. Okay. This equation quantifies the relationship between a rocket's velocity, the velocity of its exhaust, and the mass ratio of the rocket. Okay. In essence, it gave us the mathematical tools to calculate the feasibility of space travel. So it sounds like Tsiolkovsky's equation really changed the game. It did. It provided a roadmap, a way to translate those scientific principles mm -hmm. into concrete calculations yeah. for launching objects into space. Exactly. But even with all this progress, mm -hmm. there was a persistent problem. Yeah. Chemical rockets were notoriously fuel hungry. That's the crux of the issue. Yeah. The reliance on massive amounts of propellant severely limited how far and fast we could travel, uh -huh. especially for ambitious missions like sending humans to Mars. Right. The sheer weight of the fuel required was a major constraint. Yeah. Therefore, the allure of plasma engines with their promise of significantly higher fuel efficiency right. became increasingly irresistible. Uh-huh. So that's where plasma engines enter the picture. Yes. Instead of burning fuel like traditional chemical rockets, yeah, yeah. they use electricity and magnetic fields to superheat and accelerate charged particles. Mm. Plasma. Plasma. It's a completely different approach. Mm. And from what I'm reading, it results in way higher specific impulse. Yes. What exactly does that mean? Specific impulse essentially measures how efficiently a rocket uses propellant. Okay. Think of it this way. Okay. A chemical rocket is like a gas guzzling truck. Okay. While a plasma engine is like a sleek electric car okay. that can travel hundreds of miles on a single charge. I like that analogy. The higher the specific impulse, the more thrust you can generate from a given amount of propellant. Okay. This translates to longer journeys, faster acceleration, and ultimately greater possibilities for exploration. So if plasma engines are so efficient, 
why haven't we been using them all along? Right. There must be some drawbacks or challenges, right? There, there are. Our sources mention several different types of plasma engines. Yeah. Each with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. We've got ion thrusters, Hall effect thrusters, VRAM. Right. It's a bit overwhelming. You're right. It can seem like a complex landscape. Yeah. But let's break it down. Okay. Ion thrusters, for example, are known for their incredibly high specific impulse, making them extremely efficient. Uh -huh. However, they produce very low thrust, okay. meaning they're best suited for missions that require gentle, long-duration acceleration, okay. like adjusting the position of satellites or undertaking extended voyages through deep space. So they're the marathon runners of the space propulsion world. Yes. Slow and steady but capable of covering immense distances over time. Exactly. What about Hall Effect thrusters? How do they compare? Hall Effect thrusters offer a bit more oomph. Okay. They generate higher thrust levels than ion thrusters, uh -huh. although their specific impulse is slightly lower. Okay. This makes them more versatile, potentially suitable for a wider range of missions. Okay. From maneuvering spacecraft in orbit to propelling probes to nearby planets. And then we have Vassimer. Yes. Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket. That's a mouthful. This one sounds particularly intriguing. VASM is a fascinating concept because it offers the potential for variable specific impulse. In essence, it could switch between a high efficiency mode for long distance cruising uh -huh. and a high thrust mode for quicker maneuvers. Okay. This adaptability would be invaluable for complex deep space missions, I'm... allowing for greater flexibility and optimizing performance for different phases of a journey. It's like having a spaceship with an adjustable engine. Yeah. Able to tailor its performance to the specific demands of the mission. Yeah. That's incredible. It is. But amidst all these fascinating concepts, mm -hmm. there's one development that's really caught everyone's attention. Yes. And that's where the story takes a dramatic turn. Indeed, the recent unveiling of a new plasma engine prototype by Russia right. has sent ripples throughout the scientific and space exploration communities. Wow. The claims surrounding this prototype are bold, even audacious, yeah. suggesting the possibility of reaching Mars in a time frame that until recently right. seemed like pure science fiction. 30 to 60 days to Mars. It's incredible. It's almost too incredible to believe. I right now it takes six to nine months just to get there, and that's with conventional chemical rockets. Right. What kind of technological leap are we talking about here? Right. What's the secret sauce that could make such a dramatic reduction in travel time possible? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. And the answer lies in a combination of factors that push the boundaries of plasma propulsion technology. Okay. We need to delve deeper into the specifics of this Russian prototype to understand how it aims to achieve okay. such groundbreaking performance. This is where things get really exciting. It is. So let's dive into the heart of this Russian prototype. Yes. And explore the technological advancements that could potentially reshape the future of space travel. Let's do it. This is fascinating. I can't wait to learn more about it. Me too. Um, Shall we? Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. We're back and ready to delve deeper into this Russian plasma engine prototype that's promising to shrink the journey to Mars down to just a month or two. It's an exciting prospect. Before the break, we were talking about the different types of plasma engines. Yes. But this one seems to be in a league of its own. Right. So what makes it so special? Yeah. What are the key innovations that could enable such a dramatic reduction in travel time? Well, based on the information available, it seems the Russian prototype leverages several advancements in plasma propulsion technology. Okay. But there's an element of secrecy surrounding the specifics. Right, of course. One crucial aspect is likely its magnetic nozzle design. Okay. Which plays a critical role in accelerating the plasma to incredibly high velocities. Magnetic nozzle. Okay, remind me. How does that work again? Imagine a magnetic field shaped like a funnel guiding and focusing the superheated plasma okay. as it's expelled from the engine. Okay. This magnetic nozzle acts like an invisible hand squeezing and accelerating the plasma stream, uh -huh. generating thrust without any physical contact. So there's no, like, physical nozzle? No, n no physical contact. Why? It's a delicate dance of electromagnetism. Yeah. And achieving optimal performance requires precise control over the shape and strength of the magnetic fields involved. So it's not just about brute force. It's about finesse. Exactly. Carefully shaping those magnetic fields to squeeze every bit of thrust out of the plasma stream. Precisely. But even with a highly efficient magnetic nozzle, 
wouldn't you still need an enormous amount of power right. to reach those incredible speeds needed for a 30-day trip to Mars? Absolutely. What about the power source? Is that part of the secret sauce? Power is a critical factor. Yeah. The Russian team claims their prototype can generate six newtons of thrust at 300 kilowatts of power. Wow. But the specifics of the power generation system remain shrouded in secrecy. Okay. Speculation is rife, with some experts suggesting that a compact nuclear reactor might be the key. A nuclear reactor in space that seems incredibly risky. It does. And raises all sorts of safety concerns. It certainly does, and it's a topic that demands careful consideration. Yeah. But remember, for missions beyond the moon, solar power becomes less viable as sunlight weakens with distance. Right. A compact nuclear reactor, while presenting significant challenges in terms of safety and radiation shielding, hmm. could offer a reliable and long-lasting power source for deep space missions. I see. It's a technology with both immense potential and inherent risks. Yeah, for sure. And it's likely to be a focal point of discussion and debate as we venture further into space. It's clear that this Russian prototype pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible with plasma propulsion. It really does. But as with any groundbreaking technology, there are bound to be challenges and limitations. Absolutely. Earlier, we touched upon the engineering hurdles of plasma engines in general. Yeah. Are those amplified with this new prototype? Certainly, scaling up any technology to meet such ambitious performance goals presents a unique set of challenges. Okay. Maintaining plasma stability at those extreme temperatures and power levels is paramount. Right. Imagine trying to control a miniature sun. A swirling mass of superheated charged particles confined and directed by invisible magnetic forces. Yeah. Any instability in the plasma flow could lead to catastrophic engine failure. So it's a balancing act. It is. Trying to contain this incredibly powerful and volatile force while ensuring it flows smoothly and efficiently through the engine. Exactly. And on top of that, you have to deal with the immense heat generated. Yes. I remember reading that some of the materials used in plasma engines have to withstand temperatures mm -hmm. that would melt conventional metals. Right. How do they even find materials that can handle that kind of heat? That's where material science plays a crucial role, constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Okay. They're using exotic materials like refractory metals and ceramics, specifically engineered to withstand those extreme temperatures. Wow. But even these advanced materials have their limits. Right. And managing the thermal loads within the engine is a critical challenge. It's like a constant battle against the forces of nature. Trying to harness this incredibly powerful energy source mm -hmm. while keeping it from melting your spaceship. You got it. And let's not forget about reliability. Of course. If you're sending humans to Mars, you need an engine that can operate flawlessly for months, even years, mm. in the harsh environment of space. Reliability is absolutely paramount. Right. Any malfunction in deep space could have dire consequences. Exactly. So ensuring the engine can withstand the rigors of prolonged spaceflight, including exposure to radiation and micrometeoroids, is a top priority. Okay. This involves rigorous testing redundant systems and meticulous attention to detail in every aspect of the engine's design and construction. It's fascinating how this one technology, plasma propulsion, touches upon so many different fields. Mm -hmm. Physics, materials, science, engineering, even nuclear technology. It's a multidisciplinary endeavor. But let's shift gears for a moment and consider the bigger picture. Okay. Even if we assume this Russian prototype lives up to its hype yeah. and delivers those remarkable travel times, mm -hmm. what would a 30-day trip to Mars actually mean for human exploration? Right. What are the potential benefits and implications of such a dramatic reduction in travel time? That's where things get truly exciting. Okay. A 30-day journey to Mars would be a game changer. Wow. Dramatically altering our perception of space travel and opening up a realm of possibilities we're only beginning to imagine. It's almost like science fiction becoming reality. It is. So let's dive into that world of possibilities space. and explore the profound impact this technology could have on humanity's future in space. Let's do it. We're back, and I'm still reeling from the possibilities a 30-day trip to Mars could unlock. Yeah, it's pretty mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling to think how such a dramatic reduction in travel time could impact human exploration. Absolutely. So let's dive into those implications. What are the biggest potential benefits? Well, first and foremost, a shorter journey significantly reduces the risks to astronauts. Oh. Right now, one of the biggest concerns with sending humans to Mars is the prolonged exposure to radiation in deep space. Right. Cosmic rays and solar flares pose significant health threats, increasing the risk of cancer and other long-term complications. 
That makes sense. Less time and space equals less exposure to those harmful rays. What else? Another major benefit is the psychological impact. Okay. Confining a crew within a cramped spacecraft for six to nine months, even with the best psychological support, is bound to take a toll. Right. Reducing the mission duration to just 30 days would significantly lessen the psychological stress. Yeah. Leading to a healthier and more productive crew. It's like the difference between a cross-country road trip and a quick flight across a few states. Exactly. Both can be stressful, but that extended time in close quarters can really amplify things. Right. A shorter trip would definitely make for a happier crew. For sure. What other implications might this have? There are also significant logistical advantages. Okay. Shorter missions mean less food, water, and supplies needed, which reduces the overall mass of the spacecraft. Right. This, in turn, can lower launch costs and make missions more economically feasible. So it's a domino effect with positive outcomes across the board. Absolutely. It's like packing for a weekend getaway versus a months-long expedition. Exactly. You need a lot less baggage. Way less. It sounds like this technology could revolutionize our approach to space exploration. I think so. Making it safer, more efficient, and potentially even more affordable. Yeah, I agree. But even with all these potential benefits, we can't ignore the broader implications. Of course. Especially when it comes to things like space debris and the environmental impact of increased space travel. Right. Earlier, we discussed these concerns in the context of plasma propulsion in general. Yeah. But do they become even more pronounced with this Russian prototype yeah. and the prospect of more frequent and ambitious missions? It's a valid concern as space becomes more accessible. The potential for increased debris and environmental impact does grow. Right. But it's not a simple equation. No. While this technology could lead to more missions, it also allows for more efficient use of resources, uh -huh. potentially mitigating some of those concerns. So it's a trade-off, like many things in life. It is. But it sounds like the potential benefits of plasma propulsion, particularly with this new prototype, outweigh those risks. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. What's the takeaway message here? What should our listeners be thinking about as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of plasma engines? I think the most important takeaway is that we're on the cusp of a new era in space exploration. Okay. This Russian prototype, whether or not it achieves those ambitious 30-day travel times, right. highlights the incredible advancements happening in the field of plasma propulsion. Yeah. It's a technology with the potential to reshape our relationship with space, mm -hmm. opening up new frontiers, and challenging us to think bigger and bolder about humanity's future among the stars. It's a reminder that we're not just passive observers in this vast cosmic arena. We're explorers, innovators, and dreamers. Well. And with technologies like plasma propulsion, we're pushing the boundaries of what's possible, venturing further into the unknown and seeking answers to the age-old questions that have captivated humanity since we first looked up at the stars. Absolutely. It's an exciting time to be alive. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep looking up and keep exploring.